Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today we are going to look at Qt Creator and CMake together. Let's get started. In our previous video, we were looking a little bit at Live RealSense. Typically when I start looking at a project like that, I will use Qt Creator to actually read in the library and take a look at the source code. Live RealSense is a little bit more complicated than a lot of our projects that we work on, but I thought it would be worth taking a look here. When we use the scripts to install Live RealSense, it loads Qt Creator for us. Just as a point of reference, here's what it actually calls is Qt5 default and Qt Creator. Let's start Qt Creator up. Let's set the compilers up. We'll add GCC. Custom arm. That looks happy. Let's define a kit. This is on a Jetson TX2. Apply. OK. Normally, we would just load a project from the make file. One of the things that was different about Live RealSense is that we needed to build a custom version of CMake. Live RealSense requires CMake 3.8 or above. We compiled CMake 3.11. Let's switch over to the CMake directory. sudo make install. The installation will be put into slash user slash local. The earlier version is in slash user. So looking at the path, it looks into slash user slash local first, and it believes that the CMake version is 3.11.4. Let's go back over to Qt Creator. Let's open a file or a project. We'll look into Live RealSense, and we are looking for CMake lists. Open. Okay, it didn't buy that. So we'll just type it in here. That'll teach it. Arguments. Let's build it with CUDA. And we'll run CMake. Oh, it didn't like that. Okay, it says it can't find the CMake CUDA compiler. That's not surprising. It doesn't appear to know very much. Well, let's set it in the cache. That sounds like a plan. It's building in live real sense slash build. Here's our cache. Open that. This seems to be a likely candidate. <laughs> Not found. A loser. Okay. Let's go figure out where it is. Uh, 
That looks like a likely spot for it. And it is called MVCC. Get rid of this. Okay, try it again. Run CMake. Okay, so it looks like it actually completed it this time. Let's finish this. And now we have all of our sourcey code. Okay, so let's run our program. When I was originally working on this revision of LibRealSense for the Jetson, there was a bug that I was looking for. When I built the current repository, I included the patch around that bug. For the purposes of this demonstration, I removed the patch and we're going to go hunt it down ourselves. It's not very hard to find. So let's build the RealSense viewer. And we'll run it in debug mode. I think this little ladybug here is a bug. So we're going to run in debug mode. So off it will go and build the program for us. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at our application output. We can see that we had some warnings here when an exception was thrown when inspecting properties of a sensor. So that's one thing that we would look at. I have not looked at that particular issue. The issue that I was referring to is, let's turn on the RGB camera. It's these hardware notifications. We tend to get quite a few of the incomplete frames detected. Depends on how much light is in the room and the auto exposure settings. It's not bad right now, so when it's dark, you notice our frame per second is not right. So let's turn this off again. There we go. So when it's doing 30 frames a second, we get these hardware notification errors. There's a little bit of light in the room, some overhead lights. Can't have the video without the shark. Here's the shark. So let's find the source of these hardware notification errors. We notice that the error is incomplete frame detected. So let's do a global search. Current project. Looks like we got lucky. There's only one reference to it. You can see in our patch, what we had done is we just return out of this. If you're really debugging this, you'd want to take a look at the incomplete frames and why they're coming back incomplete. When I was researching this, what I found was if you pull the actual frame before it's filled, the Jetson returns it. It doesn't wait until it's a complete frame. I don't know whether that's an error somewhere deep in the USB stack or it's in the V4L driver or where exactly it is, but it is a problem. It very well could be an issue somewhere in the live real sense library, but I doubt it. This is where it's reading the buffer from the video frame. Let's put a stop here. So the breakpoint, let's go into this XI octal call, see what that is. We'll step into that. So we see that the only thing that it does is make an I octal call. So that's pretty low level. I doubt that there's anything that we do inside of that. 
outside of the USB driver that would cause issues. It just apparently returns frames that aren't complete. So let's put in our little patch here. We'll stop debugging. I'm not sure how to correct this, so I just returned out of here. So let's rerun it again. Yes, please. This is part of the Live Real Sense library, so it's going to have to relink all that after it builds this particular file. Okay, moment of truth. Let's turn on the RGB camera. We still have our breakpoint. Let's disable that. No more error. Still 15 frames a second. Let's try that again. Yes, that's quite ugly. So trying 30 frames a second and you're not getting the warning errors. Anyway, that's kind of the straight up how you go about starting up CMake. This isn't really a tutorial on how to use Qt Creator or anything. It's just more like, here's how you get started. There's a lot of online material on how to use CMake and Qt and Qt Creator. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.